this, this presentation, Demystifying the Read Aloud, um, is based on some research that Gail and I have been doing, but also on hours of conversation about using picture books and our thoughts on how we can help teachers become ever more confident about bringing picture books into the early language learning classroom. So the um, title of our talk then is Demystifying the read aloud in early English language learning. And we have put a little banner across the top, which appears occasionally. And this is uh, taken from the picture book, a picture book by Barreau, which we will be talking about later. So let's start. Okay, so this is what we would uh, like to do during this talk. First of all, we're going to unpack the terms story and storytelling. Then we're going to define what a picture book read aloud is. And then we're going to consider the role of the teacher as mediator in a read aloud. Then we will present three mediation techniques to uh, use during the read aloud. And then we will outline implications for teachers and teacher educators. So if we have a look at this word web, um, we can see that the term story exists in many configurations and highlights its multi-layered usages and meanings. Let's home in now on the term storytelling, which is often used as a generic term to refer to oral, oral storytelling, which is telling stories without a book or reading stories from a book, in our case, um, reading stories aloud from a picture book. And the verbs telling and reading are often used interchangeably. Now this can be misleading because telling and reading stories are two different activities which require different teacher competences and offer different affordances to the child. So the focus of our keynote then is to clarify what reading aloud from a picture book entails. So we're first going to give a definition of the picture book. So a picture book is not just a picture, a book rather with words. And our favorite definition is by Barbara Bader and it's one that we share when we're talking about picture books and many of you will be familiar with this definition. It's divided into three parts. So I'm just going to read the first bit. A picture book is text, illustrations, total design, an item of manufacture and a commercial product, a social, cultural, historic document and foremost, an experience for a child. So this part of the definition highlights uh, in particular, the fact that we are looking at text and illustrations, but together with design in the creation of the picture book. This is because illustrations spill over into the parts of the book, which are usually ignored. The publishers, peritext, the covers, the end papers, title pages, etc. And a designer is key to ensuring that the picture book is an aesthetically pleasing object. Bader also highlights their social, cultural, historic aspects, hinting at the depth of the topics and themes that picture books can cover. And we've just seen the picture book by, um, in Norway, which was just deep, very deep, and in a theme and in a topic which many of us would, you know, would be frightened to bring into the classroom. And these topics make picture books especially useful for the language learning classroom. The, um, second part then, as an art form, it hinges on the interdependence of pictures and words and on the simultaneous display of two facing pages and on the drama of the turning of the page. This interdependence of pictures and words where um, you know, they are both necessary to really understand what is happening on the page. Um, and then finally, on its own terms, its possibility, possibilities are limitless. So picture books really are an exceptional form of children's literature. And if used carefully, can take a teacher and their learner to play and their learners to places that they have never been before. Its possibilities are limitless. I just want to make a comment on the um, the word picture book, the fact that picture that book and picture are brought together in a compound compound form because this highlights the compound nature of the picture book itself. The fact that the pictures and the words are both important. Okay, so coming back to the generic use of the term storytelling, both oral, st oral st storytelling and reading a picture book aloud um, are very valuable activities. They offer a shared social experience for the children and the teacher, which provokes a shared response of laughter, sadness, excitement, and anticipation. I felt shivers 
running down my spine listening to grow, um, which can be both enjoyable and which can contribute to social and emotional development. They both pri provide access to continuous and coherent spoken discourse, and they offer an additional uh, resource of high, uh, additional source of high quality input for meaningful listening activities, which offer variety and exercise the child's imagination. Then they enable the child to develop concentration and self-management skills, as well as predicting and inferencing skills. And they can promote a holistic approach to teaching and learning as storytelling offers educational gains, which go beyond linguistic gains, gains through making links with other areas of the curriculum, developing learning to learn, reinforcing concepts, and most importantly, providing opportunities for citizenship and uh, intercultural education. So let us now look at the differences between oral telling and reading aloud from a picture book. When oral talk storytelling, the teacher needs to learn and memorize the story to tell it orally, that is without a book. The teacher may grade or personalize the language for a particular group of children. And as the story is told from memory, it may differ on retellings. The child's role in the telling is very much that of a listener and visual support is dependent on the storyteller's use of mime and gesture and possibly some props. The picture shows um, Grace Hulworth, who is a famous um, storyteller. She is now in her 90s and she comes from Trinidad, uh, but is based in the UK. So when reading um, from a picture book, the teacher reads the verbal text aloud, which is linked to the physical object of the picture book. The children are exposed to rich, authentic language, which has not been sequenced or graded. Uh, during repeated readings, or when the child browses through the picture book, the words and pictures are always the same. So there is accurate and constant repetition of the verbal and visual texts. And the high quality visuals provide a focus which can help children to concentrate as they support their understanding or challenge them to interpret meaning if they do not always synchronize with the words. The child, in our opinion, plays an interactive role, which we will talk about more later. So as obvious as it may seem, we think it's necessary to define what a read aloud is. So a, a picture book read aloud is when an adult reads a book aloud to a, a child or a group of children. It's not when a child reads out loud in the classroom. That's something quite different. So the picture book read aloud then is essentially a listening activity. However, it provides a range of affordances for children learning English as another language. Read alouds develop an awareness that words and pictures interanimate to create meaning. They prompt the children to be active in their interpretation of what they see and hear or read. Read alouds support children's ability to recognize and understand ideas conveyed through the visual, developing their visual literacy. Read alouds foster an intercultural awareness. If we recall Sims Bishop, she introduced us to the famous architectural metaphor that picture books can be windows, doors, or mirrors. Windows offering views of the world that may be real or imagined, familiar or strange. Doors to walk through in their imagination to become part of whatever world has been created. And mirrors for us to see our own lives and experiences as part of the larger human experience. Read alouds can support the acquisition of formulaic sequences and chunks of language through the consistent repetition of the verbal text, often experienced through the repetition of the read aloud. For younger children, read alouds are key to developing children's emergent literacy skills, showing how print functions, its directionality, and how it's used. Read alouds provide exposure to a variety of discourse types, narrative, descriptive, informational, rhyming. And last, but certainly not least, Read alouds develop a lifelong interest in books, in particular if read alouds are multiple and many in the classroom. 
Okay, so the term storytelling is also used to refer to a pedagogical approach to language teaching, which involves the planning of a sequence, a learning sequence in the form of a mini syllabus around a picture book, and it incorporates the before, during and after stages that are usually associated with skills based activities. However, picture book read alouds may or may not be part of a storytelling approach, as picture books can be read aloud in class for different reasons. First of all, for, for story time, where the focus is on in enjoyment and the shared social experience with no specific objectives, but which naturally contributes to children's language and literacy development. Well, maybe they can give you. As one of many resources integrated into a scheme of work, exposing children to the target language in a meaningful way and supporting and extending their acquisition of topic-based uh, language and reaching learning objectives. And then the third, as the source of planning, embodying the story-based approach where all activities and learning outcomes are structured around the concepts, the themes, the language, or even the illustrative style of the picture book. When a picture book is first presented in an English class, for whichever of these reasons, it will almost always be as a picture book read aloud. So we'd now like to talk about mediation in relation to picture book read alouds. This is something that we have been talking about in depth. And so we'd like to present you with um, our definition of mediation. There are four parts to it. So how then do we define mediation in relation to picture book read alouds? Mediation is the support or assistance given by the teacher when sharing a picture book with a group of children. And we often refer to this as scaffolding. Mediation begins with the picture book selection. It continues during the read aloud and extends into the follow-up activities. So it's, it's a package um, and, 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 and um, fairly complex in that sense. Mediation is dependent upon the teacher using a combination of techniques effectively, and we'll be talking about these techniques in a minute, and planning and managing an inclusive and effective read aloud experience. And finally, mediation enables children to interact in a language rich environment and to share their personal responses to the picture book. And here we're emphasizing the fact that it's an interactive um, experience for the teacher and the children. It's not just about the children listening, although it is a listening activity. Okay, so we can see that mediation of a picture book read aloud can be broken down into these three um, familiar stages. The process begins with the selection of a picture book, which reads aloud well and meets the needs of a particular group of children. It may involve the setting up of a read aloud space, such as moving to a story corner to prepare children psychologically and effectively and to establish readiness for the read aloud. The teacher will find a point of entry to ignite interest and curiosity and to stimulate children's prior knowledge to enable them to connect story information to their own lived experiences. And they may pre-teach some key vocabulary items uh, or language items and explain any unfamiliar cultural or contextual details. Now, Sandy is now going to talk about the after read aloud, picture book read aloud uh, stage, and then we'll come back to during the read aloud. So after the read aloud then, depending of course on the purpose of the read aloud, the teacher may plan a variety of multi-sensory follow-up activities, which can stimulate a children to think and reflect and give personal responses to the picture book. These activities will extend the children's learning by making links to other areas of the curriculum and should also be planned to cater for the children's needs and interests. After activities should also include access to the picture book in a class library or a story corner for book browsing, as well as through repeated read alouds. So coming back to uh, during the read aloud, this stage involves what we refer to as using expressive techniques. This is making use of the body, the eyes and the voice. It's reading aloud effectively to bring the story uh, alive and to, to lift the words off the pages and using read aloud talk to involve children in the interpretation of the whole book. So focusing on this during stage, we would like to suggest after Masoni and Bauman that the read aloud itself is a performance 
made up of a combination of techniques which bring into being a multimodal, language-rich event. Bauman actually refers to it as a performance event. So this read aloud performance event depends upon the systematic interaction of three situational factors. You can see them here, rather you can see the triangle. <laughs> the picture book as aesthetic object, how the peritextual features and the pictures and words interanimate and contribute to meaning. The children, their age, the knowledge of English, the languages they speak, their knowledge of the world, their interests, their individual and collective personalities, and the teacher, the expressive techniques used during the read aloud. Now the picture book triangle model highlights the potential interaction that can occur during a read aloud event as each factor influences the other. And you can see here that the arrows are going backwards and forwards from each of the corners of the triangle. However, the children will also influence each other through their responses to what they see and hear during the read aloud experience. Now these factors are generalized across all picture book read alouds. The words and the pictures remain constant, but the interaction around the picture book read aloud will never be the same, even if you are sharing the same picture book with the same group of children. Our performance as teacher mediator will begin as a one person show, but soon becomes collaborative as children become increasingly active in the co-construction of meaning. So now we're actually going to talk you through these expressive techniques which we've mentioned. But first, we thought it might be more interesting if we provided examples of the expressive techniques using a picture book. So we recorded ourselves reading aloud to an imaginary group of children in order to demonstrate how expressive techniques might be used during our own read alouds. We had lots of fun doing this and lots of fun analysing them as well. <laughs> <laughs> We've chosen the picture book Welcome by Barrault, published by Egmont in 2016, not only because we both like it very much, but it is actually an important picture book on the professional development course that's part of the Icefell project. Okay, so um, I'm going to give a brief synopsis uh, of Welcome. It's written and illustrated by Barrault and published by Egmont. Um, so uh, on the cover, we can see a polar bear but uh, this is not the begin uh, beginning of the story. A polar bear and his friends drift away from their home in the Arctic on a piece of ice which has broken away. They hope to find a new home, but are turned away from one new place after another, and they start to lose hope. However, the story has a happy ending when they finally find an empty island and set up home and welcome new arrivals. And here we can see the, the link with the front cover. Welcome be, can be used to discuss the plight of migrants and refugees, as well as global warming. Okay, so if you recall, our first expressive technique was body, eyes and voice. So we can bring the picture book alive by being aware of our body, the way we use gestures, facial expressions, actions, positioning and posture our eyes and gaze and the way that we make contact with the children, showing expression, meaning, or even emotion. And our voice and vocal variety and the way that we use stress, intonation, tone, volume, pace, and even pause. So as you can see here, Gail is using a gesture to support the verbal text as she reads out, what's that noise? She puts her hand to her ear. Also notice her quizzical facial expression. <laughs> Then what happens next? Oh, there's a crack in the ice. And as you can see that the word crack is big and in capital letters. So of course it needs to be read out loudly. And there I am saying crack very loudly. And I actually move forward as I say this, bringing the noise and the danger nearer to the learners. And then look at our eyes and our gaze. We are making eye contact with the children through our gaze to establish rapport and to keep them engaged. Okay, the next uh, expressive technique is reading aloud effectively. And according to Edie Garvey, reading aloud well is an acquired art. Picture books are sometimes read aloud too quickly or jerkily. 
and the reader may bury themselves in the book. They may not pause enough and they may not make uh, enough eye contact with the audience. However, although there is no exact right way of reading aloud other than to try to be as interesting and expressive as possible, and each teacher will have their own style, to read aloud fluently and meaningfully, the teacher needs to decode the verbal text and pay attention to each word in order to convey its meaning and to read the story with emotion. The reader needs to use the punctuation and font and other print features as a guide to know when to pause, to give emphasis, or to differentiate between dialogue and narrative, statement and question and so on. They need to be able to assimilate chunks of the verbal text by scanning ahead. And all of this combines with the way the reader interprets the pictures and the words, uh, how the pictures and the words interanimate so that children experience the drama of the turning page at the appropriate moment. Now let's have a look at how this works um, from a double spread um, from Welcome. And this is the first island that the polar bears arrive at, which is inhabited by cows. The polar bears ask very politely, may we live here, please? But the cows are unwelcoming and they think up reasons why the polar bears cannot live on their island. The punctuation, that is the three dots that we see here, indicates to the reader to pause as each cow makes up an unconvincing reason and the enlarged print and bold font informs the reader to emphasize or stress the adjective. Hmm, you are too furry. You are too tall. You are too bearish. Sorry. And I wonder whether the sorry from this third cow actually reflects some conscience and regret, or does it reflect indifference? What do you think from my expression? That's lovely, Gail. You didn't, you didn't <laughs> tell me you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> the final expressive technique is a read aloud talk. This is adult generated talk, which goes beyond reading the picture book verbal text. So read aloud talk enables meaningful interaction, participation and interpret interpretation between the teacher and their children and between the children themselves. I can't remember what comes next. Oh, that's right, just a minute. I don't need that yet. <laughs> it provides access to rich contextualized language and it resembles um, child directed speech, which supports and scaffolds children's understanding. If you remember scaffolding was part of the um, definition in mediation. So read aloud talk occurs in a variety of forms and is effective for different purposes during the read aloud event. We've identified five different categories of read aloud talk, which contribute to a holistic picture book read aloud experience. And these are general, general read aloud talk, read aloud talk that looks at the picture as object, read aloud talk for clarifying, read aloud talk for asking questions, and read aloud talk for commenting, commentating. And we will now briefly provide examples from our recorded read alouds. Okay, so the first category of read aloud talk is general. And um, this refers to opening and closing the read aloud event. Um, for example, introducing yourself in the book as I'm doing here. Hello, I'm going to read this picture book called Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's also linked to familiar routines and uh, management of the read aloud event. So here's just some examples of what we might use for managing the children. At the beginning, we might say, listen with your ears and look with your eyes. Is everybody ready? And then maybe, Anna, have you got a question? Everyone, listen to Anna. Um... Clarifying then is the second read, um, category of read aloud talk, and it's the strategic and judicious use of the L1, the children's own language or the common classroom language. Um, so the teacher needs to be very careful about using the, um, the L1, but also in rephrasing what the children say um, when they comment and, and say something in the L1, we can rephrase it into English. It's also about repeating some of the key words or key phrases within the picture book uh, verbal text, expanding on what these um, what, what the verbal text actually um, um, says, 
or expanding on what something might be might, might be shown in the illustrations and comparing and associating so helping children um, in relation to what they know and understand about the world already. So here I am uh, at the beginning of the picture book and the polar bear introduces himself. I am a polar bear, that's me, paddling in the water near my friends. And I stop the reading and I ask, can you see him there? Look, and I point, there he is, paddling in the water, because I'm sure that the children won't know the word paddling and I want them to see that that is the polar bear and his legs are hanging off there um, and he is paddling in the water. Okay, the next um, category of read aloud talk is related to picture book as object. And this includes giving information about the picture book creator, as I'm doing here. And it's by Barou, and Barou is French, and he has written the words and drawn the pictures. It also includes giving background information about the story and talking about and bringing children's attention to the peritext, that is the front and back covers, uh, the end papers, the title page and so on, and using the meta language to refer to it as I'm doing here. Look at these beautiful end papers, this beautiful blue. I wonder if this is the sky or the sea. What do you think? And of course, you could um, go on further and ask children to say how they think the end papers relate and link to the story. Uh, the fourth category is um, read aloud talk for asking questions. So here we are stimulating the children to notice, to predict and to think. This is what being a good reader is all about, but also to wonder and ponder, which again is another another um, aspect of, 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 of what readers should be doing as they read and, and, and look at illustrations and to reflect on similarities and differences in relation to what they know about their own worlds. So here I am with um, the penultimate spread in the book um, and um, the bears have inhabited the empty island and they've made themselves at home. Along come some monkeys and the monkeys say, can you help us please? It looks like you've got plenty of room and so I turn to the, to the children and I ask, do you think that they're going to let the monkeys stay? And we turn the page, yes, welcome. They let the monkeys stay, hooray. <laughs> and the final category of read aloud talk is commentating. And this is related to the reader giving their own interpretations, to thinking aloud and hypothesizing, to wondering and pondering and speculating and describing the illustrations. Here is an example, um, as the bears are drifting away on their piece of ice in the vastness of the ocean. And to pass the time they play, I spy with my little eye, something beginning with W. Hmm, I wonder if it's water and look at my gesture and facial ex questioning facial expression. I wonder if it's water. Well, Gail, it's a wave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, to, to summarize then, we'd like to um, describe the whole um, picture book read aloud event. And the model that you can see here reflects the multimodality and multifaceted aspects of a read aloud event. And we've identified four interacting and overlapping key aspects, which are required in order to create an enabling multimodal environment. First, starting with the outer circle, a read aloud is a performance event. It's a shared social experience with a beginning, a middle and an end. And it's a, an event that needs to be planned as a whole event, as this is very closely linked to creating rapport. So underpinning the three stages of the read aloud is the key competence of creating and maintaining rapport to establish a bond with the group of children which conveys enthusiasm and fosters engagement and motivation so that learning takes place. So we're assuming that children will want to read, uh, listen to the read aloud more than once, but for this to happen, it needs to be engaging. And we've identified four main areas of engagement. Uh, effective engagement, this is where the child connects with the reader, the story, and they connect with each other. Aesthetic engagement, this is where the child is connecting with the picture book as object, the pictures, the words, and the whole design. Cognitive engagement, this is connecting with the narrative, the theme and the concepts and multisensory engagement that is connecting 
um, with the mediator through voice and actions alongside the picture book. And then finally, the expressive techniques, which we talked about. And as you can see, these overlap and interact. So our model represents the multiple layers that contribute to an enabling multimodal environment through picture book read alouds. Okay, so to, to finish then, we'd like to um, consider the implications for uh, the teacher as a mediator in a read aloud. And we can see that it's really important that teachers are able to differ differentiate between uh, the performances of oral storytelling and reading aloud from a picture book, um, because they're both different. And to be aware of and practice and rehearse the necessary competencies and techniques required for each in order to be spontaneous and fluent and to recognize the different affordances for the child. And so this has huge implications for teacher, educa whoops, teacher education, where in our opinion, recognition of the differences between oral storytelling and picture book read alouds is not always addressed in a systematic and principled way. So neither is it allocated the time needed for the teachers to practice and acquire the competences that we've described, the body, eyes and voice, reading aloud and read aloud talk. The more aware teachers and student teachers become of these competences, the more confident they will feel to incorporate picture book read alouds into their teaching repertoires and provide their learners with an authentic, enriching and holistic learning experience. Okay, so this is what we have um, covered today. Uh, first of all, we've unpacked the term storytelling to show the differences between oral storytelling and reading aloud from a picture book to highlight that they are different activities requiring different activities and offering different affordances to the child. We've defined the picture book read aloud for you and suggested that it is a performance event. We have defined mediation and the process of mediating a picture book read aloud, which begins with the picture book selection and ends with follow up activities and all of which is dependent upon the teacher using a combination of techniques effectively. Yeah, and we presented those three mediating techniques which we think are important the body, eyes and voice, reading aloud and read aloud talk. And finally, we've considered the implications for both the teacher and for teacher educators and the need for read alouds to be allocated the necessary time on teacher development courses. So thank you very much and uh, we are ready to answer uh, your questions. <laughs>